Ducky, you're a cute little butt. Hey, I'm Summon. And I'm June. And this is You Know Who. And this is a Book 2 World Without Princes special edition of Ever Never TV. Yay! You know how Book 2 is about boys versus girls? Uh-huh. Uh, so the proof that Dougie is a boy is I picked him up today, and then I was sitting on his favorite pillow over there, so then he climbed on top of my shoulder in order to claim his pillow, and then when I still wouldn't move, he farted really loud and aggressively. <laughs> The Marcus territory. And, and I moved. Thank you guys for all your wonderful book one reactions. January was really fun reminiscing on all the memories from the book one days. So February is our book two spotlight. So we will be discussing all things book two. And there'll be a book two contest at some point. And if you've been following me on Instagram, uh, Somancy is my username. I've been posting extra secrets. Uh, there as well and on Twitter at Somachiani. So if you want the full range of secrets you want to keep watching Ever Never TV and also look at Instagram and Twitter. I feel like book two is so dark that inevitably like the secrets I'm kind of curious if they reflect the darker change in tone. It's obviously a bridge book and I feel like bridge books never get enough love but it's one of the ones that I really like, and so when mm. every once in a while I get a kid come up to me, I'll be like, which is your book is your favorite? And everyone's always like, three, you know, but then occasionally off somebody would be like, two, and I'm like, you're, yeah. my, you're, <laughs> you're my people. So without further ado, shall we jump into yeah, some jump book in two let's, secrets? Let's talk about them. So I'll tell you a fun fact about Evelyn Sater and where she came from. And she came from the fact that all the deans I had growing up at school were super checked out. I felt like they'd been there forever, <laughs> and they were just waiting to like, die and so, <laughs> and so i just thought to myself well, why can't we have like angela jolie as our dean Aww. and that stuck in my head like why could you have this like absolutely stunning slightly like malevolent but gorgeous woman right like grown up sophie kind of uh -huh. um oh i never interpreted evelyn as like a sophie evelyn Tater is what happens if you have a sophie without an agatha grow up like, you oh. just become sort of like ultra, Whoa. you know, selfish. So, and not only just selfish, but a little like power hungry and, and uh, obsessed with your own end. And obviously she has her own love affair that she takes too far, like Sophie tends to. So I think mm -hmm. Evelyn and Sophie often, you know, have oh similar God. kind of like souls to them. So let's also talk about the length of the book because it's the shortest in the series. And I didn't design it that way necessarily. I had gotten a little bit of blowback from book one at the time um, that the book was too long for kids to read, which ultimately proved not true and I didn't really believe in it. But at the same time, I was also running short on time because that's when the movie sold and I was writing the first few drafts for Universal. And so I had to sort of like make a calculated assumption. And so ultimately I had a much longer third act planned, another at least 200 pages. Ooh. A big war between boys and girls where the boys Whoa. were going to turn into girls and girls were going to turn into boys. And I had this whole separate ending. And I just felt like it compromised a little bit the ending that Evelyn Sater deserved. In the end, it was worth it because then that's how book three ended up becoming... Right, you save the grand battle the for, for the... Three. Yeah, otherwise it would just be... Every book would have a huge war. So one of the things with fantasy series, and you all know this well, is that girls always go for the bad guy, right? So like, <laughs> J.K. Rowling always talks about Draco as the most popular character. And so I wanted to challenge that assumption and write a very attractive guy okay. who is so bad that you cannot like him, right? So mm. that was the challenge. I wrote Arik and there's nothing about Arik that's redeeming. Like there's nothing good about him. Like you cannot find one word that actually makes him a worthwhile soul. Uh -huh. And he's still, girls are still in love with him. Like, <laughs> so it failed. It was, it, 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 okay, but, but he, I mean, he is kind of dream. Like, you gave him, like, purple eyes, yeah, he like, like he spiky hair. He's terrible. He tortures boys. He's mean to girls. I think he passed such a legacy over books two and three that I think the fact that he comes back a little in five, you know, in this trilogy matters, you know. And so he's come back in five a little bit. Can we expect anything from six with Eric at all? Or? You know, it's funny because I'm I'm almost done writing six, and it just feels like I can't remember what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Ni ni nice dodge, so man. So the biggest feature in book two was Sophie turning into Philip. The idea that a girl would turn into a boy anatomically, right? And it came from the Oz books actually, because Ozma of Oz 
goes through this entire thing as a girl, I think, and then is revealed to be a boy at the end. Uh -huh. A boy who had been turned into a girl. And also, I, I like the idea that, like, I honestly be believe philosophically in the idea that if everybody lived as a girl and a boy until they were 13 and moved back and forth and got to choose when they were a boy and when they were a girl, uh -huh. and then had to choose what gender to be at 13 or, you know, whatever uh -huh. non binary form of gender at 13, we would all be a much happier society. Because yeah. imagine if you had lived as a girl and I had lived as a girl. And then you choose what you want to be. Yeah. Thinking, like, and you have empathy for the other totally. sex. Which, at the moment, for those of you who hang out with a lot of boys, <laughs> they don't have it. <laughs> and now, for some announcements from Dougie. So, submissions for the Design Your Own Class contest are now closed. We are reviewing them and will announce winners next week. We will also be announcing a new Book 2 themed contest. So I know you guys are starting to think about Book 6 because it comes out on June 2nd, which is only a few months away now. So everything will kick off next month when we present the pre-orders, where you can do signed pre-orders, where you can get the sort of special editions. This year is awesome because with Book 6, not only will your pre-order come with whatever special edition you order, but it's also going to come with a special gift that we're going to announce soon, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And so even if you pre-order now, don't worry, if you pre-ordered before you're watching this and you pre-ordered last year, you're still going to get the gift. All you have to do is have your receipt, and then you're going to be able to send it into a website, and you're going to get your special Book 6 pre-order gift. And also remember that the Book 5 paperback comes out the first week of April, and that's going to have chapters 1 through 4 of Book 6 in it. Uh, so we're going to talk more about all of that coming up, and the trailer is going to come out uh, in April as well, and it's going to be gorgeous. All the Book 6 stuff is going to kick off in March. Uh, that's why we're doing our little like recap of all the books leading up into it. Like March into April so, into May is going to be crazy. So, um, so get ready. All right, y'all. That's all for this week. We'll see you next see you week. Next week.